Shove it, man! <laughs> Alright, it's the master of the smack attack back with another rib crack. Today's competitor on Ring of the Hawk is very controversial, but I have to put personal feelings and hindsight away as we grade the run of Lars Sullivan in WWE. Stick around to the end of the video if you want to catch the full story. This run is taking place beginning on NXT in 2017, and today's video was also a Patreon request by Zero Day Gaming. If you want to make the Hawk talk, sign up today. I'm just so sorry it took so long, brother. Alright, it's Lars Sullivan. Will this run be like urine? Match 1, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa vs Arkai. He looks like every single roid machine at my gym. He looks absolutely massive. He's going by the name Dylan Miley and his partner is Michael Blaze in this tag match. Let's be realistic, this guy would completely crush these two small guys. Ciampa can't do much he gets powered up into the air. Ciampa is smacked down and then almost press slam but he escapes and tags out. Gargano can't do anything either and he gets a 20 second delayed suplex. Annoyingly our guy tags in his partner and the crowd turns silent. Now Gargano and Ciampa take control. Ciampa knees our guy off the apron and they quickly put away Michael Blaze with a double kick. Our guy looks really annoyed about that. This wasn't actually bad, he was extremely well protected despite losing. He isn't done though because he grits his teeth with anger and starts destroying his own partner. He picks him up by the head and drives him into the mat time and time again. Then a backbreaker into a power slam. Well that was better than the actual match. A good debut that makes you want to see more of him. It's a B. Then he disappears from TV for two months. Well what was the point in having him destroy his partner then? Match 2 Tag Match. Heavy Machinery vs Lars Sullivan and Victor Andrews. Quick note, I've seen people saying that Lars Sullivan has a generic look. Well maybe a decade ago, but I'd actually argue that in today's environment this is a very unique look. He looks genuinely scary. He's built like a brick and I believe he could kill any man. Anyway, it's a very slow start as the two big guys continue to try and score the first knockdown. Lars eventually manages it first, but he can't capitalise as Tucker Knight starts throwing kicks. His crossbody is caught and Lars muscles him up with a power slam. But just like the last match, he tags in his jobber partner. Within 10 seconds, they completely kill the jobber. He's squashed, battered and destroyed. Not sure why Lars didn't bother breaking up the pin. Come on, how does this guy look generic? How many people in the current wrestling industry look genuinely scary? That face is so ugly he could wake the dead. I'm pretty sure I could take half the current roster, but I wouldn't last a minute against this guy. Anyway, just like the last match, he's so angry that he destroys his partner, this time with a giant slam and a torture rack. The refs are too scared to be in the ring. Really good again, but not quite as good during the match, maybe because his opponents were a bit larger. It's a C. Then a month and a half goes by again. What's with all this stop, stop, bird turd? Anyway, Lars Sullivan begs Regal for another chance. Oh no, it looks like they're going to give him a gimmick where he's simple. He apologises profusely for being bad in the past and says he won't hurt his partner tonight. Nigel McGuinness compares him to Lenny off Mice and Men. Match 3, the Street Profits versus Lars Sullivan who gets his first entrance and his partner is Cliss Silvio who makes the girls say no. Lars tells his partner to stay on the apron, but he doesn't do it. Lars is livid and he's stuck on the apron again watching the match. The jobber is destroyed and desperately tries to get the tag but can't. Montez Ford hits Sullivan who just glares at him. They beat the jobber with a sky high into a frog splash. Sullivan never even got into this match. Why didn't he break up the pin instead of dumping in his nappy of anger? I guess it's because his gimmick is that he's stupid. Sullivan tries to calm down and not kill the jobber. The crowd falls silent as Lars just stands there filling his nappy of anger. The crowd start chanting Lars is gonna kill you. Lars suddenly carries the jobber to the back, presumably to eat him. But no, they catch up with him and he destroys him in a garden and slams him into a trash can. A bunch of people cower in fear. Very enjoyable character work so far, it's a B. Match 4, 3 on 1 handicap match, Lars Sullivan versus 3 random jobbers. It's a shame they couldn't have gotten the 3 jobbers he's destroyed so far, that would have been sweet. Lars demands to face all 3 of them at the same time. He quickly double clotheslines 2 of them. The other guy is billed across the ring. Wow, and there's a big overhead suplex on another. More and more throws, this is so much fun to watch. Two jobbers are thrown together in the corner and Lars takes turns splashing them. He seems to be using the Uranaki type move as a finisher and he hits the three of them to end the match. He isn't done though and he keeps beating on the three friends. They are saved by No Way Jose because Lars apparently attacked him previously. Jose punches a few times before getting clotheslined away. Sullivan also slams him. A perfect squash match and a segment I actually can't find any fault with. It's an A. Enjoying this so far. Match 5. No Way Jose vs Lars Sullivan. Jose desperately tries but he's shut down when he runs into the brick wall. Sullivan starts driving knees into his ribs. The match spills out the ring where he shoves Jose into the ring apron and drops him on it too. Back in the ring he keeps hitting corner clotheslines. 
Jose does manage to get back to his feet from the submission. He climbs onto Sullivan's bat for chin lock, but he's quickly crushed in the corner. Sullivan won't go down. He runs through Jose and randomly he climbs to the top rope. Sullivan nails a diving headbutt. There's the big slam and that's the three. Wow, some insane intensity. These are some of the funnest squash matches I've ever sat through. And it's not even boring or repetitive. It's an other A. Excellent. Match 6, Lars Sullivan vs. Oni Lorcan. He looks like Lars shrunk in the wash. Lars does struggle to land anything and he gets drop kicked. That fires him up and he intensely throws Oni out of the ring. Oni recovers and starts attacking him on the apron. He manages to knock Lars away and dives. Sullivan effortlessly catches him and drops him on the apron. That was insane, he didn't even budge on that catch. Back in the ring, Oni hits an uppercut and chops, which just seems to anger Sullivan. The running uppercut connects twice, but the third one is countered with a clothesline. I guess this finish is actually more of a spine buster, isn't it? That's the three. Very enjoyable again. I continue to be impressed. The only fault I'm seeing here is a bit of a lack of move diversity from our guy. It's a B. Match 7, Lars Sullivan versus Danny Birch. Birch shows he's not intimidated. He manages to hit a kick before Sullivan knees him in the gut. He hits cross faces time and time again. Sullivan picks him up and hits a delayed suplex, which makes him smile with happiness. Birch almost makes a comeback before he's floored again. He picks Birch up like a small child and hits the spinebuster for the free. Worst match so far. Nothing cool happened and nothing new happened. It's a D. Match 8. Lars Sullivan vs Raul Mendoza. Raul successfully uses his speed for a while. He tries a dive which Lars counters with a simple headbutt. Look at the speed and power as he catches Mendoza in the corner. And he does it again. Sullivan hits a nice power slam and some cross faces. He deadlifts Mendoza up and slams him for the free. This was nothing, but we're about to get to some more important matches as we leave the squash matches in the rear view. This one's a D. Match 9, NXT TakeOver. Cassius Ono vs Lars Sullivan. Sullivan straight away picks him up and rushes him into the corner. Cassius tries to come back, but he quickly gets knocked down. Sullivan knees him in the gut till he falls out the ring. Wow, Sullivan hits a flying shoulder block off the apron. He then drops Ono on the apron again and we're back in the ring. Ono hits a big boot and a kick. He kips up and is immediately smacked back down again. He tries to throw Ono out the ring now, which is countered and kicks Sullivan. Ono looks like he's about to get going, but then he's hit of a nice pop-up power slam. The cover is made for a two. Sullivan climbs to the top, and it's a mistake as he misses the diving headbutt. Ono kicks him in the head and smacks him in his big meatball head, but nothing takes him off his feet. A huge flying elbow to the back of the head still doesn't take Sullivan down. Then Ono hits a massive spin kick for the very first time Sullivan has been knocked down in this video. Just a two. Sullivan sits up screaming. Ono keeps kicking him in the head. This is brutal. A big back sent-off from Ono gets a one count. Sullivan is up screaming again. Ono tries another discus elbow. This time it's blocked and the spine buster ends the match. A very enjoyable match. I'm just starting to get worried about his lack of moves. He's still pretty green though, so maybe that'll improve. Good character work though. It's a B. Match 10. Lars Sullivan versus the Messiah of the Bat Break and the Girl's Knee Shaker. Roderick Strong who takes off the thong. It's a frantic start to the match as Strong tries to hit a move. It works for about 30 seconds before he runs into a lariat. It's a lot of what we've seen before, but it all looks painful. Now Strong runs into a bear hug. It looks like this one's over. No, Strong boxes his ears and escapes. Strong starts kicking the massive head time and time again. Sullivan misses a boot of his own and gets stuck on the ropes. Strong hits a bunch of forearms and knocks Sullivan out of the ring. Lars stops him on the ring apron and climbs to the top. Strong meets him up there and nails a middle rope suplex for a one count. Strong keeps trying though and he hits an ankle slam for a two count this time. Then out of nowhere, Lars hits the pop-up power slam and the spine buster for the free. I believe they're calling that move the freak accident. Not really a fan of that name, so I won't be using it. This is definitely the weakest Sullivan's looked in a match. It was a fun match, but does he have anything else in his locker? Is a C. Match 11, number one contendership match. Fatal 4-way, Killian Dane vs Johnny Gargano vs Lars Sullivan vs Alistair Black. Not sure which way this one's going. Sullivan starts out throwing Gargano across the ring. It doesn't go so well with Black who sends him from the ring, but he does avoid his dive. He can't avoid the moonsault though, but he does catch him and he drops him on the apron. He also catches Gargano's dive and drops him on the apron. He can't catch Killian Dane though. He responds dragging Dane out the ring and into the apron. Sullivan quickly gets back in the ring and tries to beat Gargano, but fails. He's quickly out the ring again, sending Dane into the steps. Everyone fights up the ramp. He throws Black off the ramp and press slams Gargano on top of him. Sullivan isn't done and he starts destroying the commentary desk. He wants to do a powerbomb on Gargano who holds onto the structure. Alistair Black knees him in the head and he's set up on the table. Then Killian Dane runs off the ramp and splashes Lars through the table. 
genuinely wondering if he's going to make it back into the match after that one. Well, after five minutes, he does start slowly moving down the ramp. He immediately attacks Black and Gargano. They try to work together, but get clotheslined. He throws Black out the ring and hits the power slam on Gargano, but Killian Dane breaks up the pin. Sullivan and Dane will now face off, two huge wrestlers in today's terms. They take turns both clotheslining each other down. Alistair Black breaks up the party with kicks. He does a nice leg sweep on Sullivan and a springboard moonsault. He hits one big kick, which looks like the knockout blow, but Black can't win as the Undisputed Era take him away. Sullivan is sent into the steps. Dane tries to powerbomb Gargano into it, which is reversed, and the two big men are slumped into a pile on the steps. Johnny Gargano puts away Black with a DDT. A great match, but maybe not so much from our guy's point of view. He had a brief spell where he looked dangerous, and then he was pretty much a non-factor. Not sure where he goes from here, it's a C. Match 12, Leo Rush versus Lars Sullivan. Leo Rush is a lot quicker and he does a lot of good work frustrating Sullivan. He hits a rolling heel kick with Sullivan on the ring apron, but he can't follow it up. Sullivan whips him into the corner of authority. He does miss his shoulder in the corner twice and it sure wasn't nice. Rush tries to follow it, but is sent through the air like the hawk and then beats him with a spine buster. Not good enough at this point. His aura is starting to fade and he's not done anything new or interesting, it's an S. Well, he cuts a promo straight after the match and he's alright at talking, he just doesn't have much of interest to say. Then he picks up Rush and does his finisher from the top rope. That's something new. It's a D now. Match 13, Lars Sullivan versus Long John Silver. It doesn't go well for Silver as he's smashed all over the ring. He wins in one minute with the power slam, the diving headbutt and the spine buster. It's a D. Match 14, Lars Sullivan versus Killian Dane. This isn't going to be like the other matches. Two 300 pounders. Dane lands a bicycle kick which sends him out of the ring. Nothing really happens. Back in the ring, Sullivan wearily applies a submission and cross faces. Sullivan tries his finisher but isn't strong enough. He misses a punch and Dane picks him up to hit a fireman's carry slam and a sent on. He attempts a Vader bomb which is blocked by Sullivan. Lars tries his own dive but takes too long. Dane climbs up with him and headbutts him down. Other people run out who will all be involved in a big wacky upcoming ladder match. They have a big stare down. The match doesn't have a proper finish. Not much to say. It's an S. Match 15, NXT TakeOver New Orleans, North American title, six-way ladder match. EC3 vs Killian Dane vs Adam Cole vs Velveteen Dream vs Lars Sullivan vs Ricochet. The crowd chant this is awesome before a punch has been thrown. The big guys send everyone from the ring so they can have another face-off, but EC3 is annoying them and they chase him. On the outside, they still can't fight because Ricochet hits the both with a shooting star press. They disappear for a while. This is not a good start. Sullivan eventually teleports into the ring to clothesline EC3 and hit the pop-up power slam on Cole, followed by another power slam on EC3. Dane throws our guy out the ring and dives out the ring onto him. Everyone ends up in the ring again, where Sullivan throws a ladder at them. He goes nuts for a bit with the ladder. He's enjoying himself. He throws his big rival into the ladder. Nice gorilla press slam on the ladder for Velveteen Dream. Sullivan starts climbing. He's met by Ricochet. Everyone assists him with a powerbomb. When he does eventually return to the match, he tries to squash Velveteen Dream with a ladder, which wasn't a good idea. Dream dives on him with an elbow drop from the ladder. We do eventually get another face-off between the two monsters. They throw Ricochet around. Sullivan gets to hit a front slam on the big guy, so I guess we'll see if that's the last of that battle. Sullivan once again climbs the ladder to loud boos. Ricochet stops him and climbs the ladder. Sullivan tries to tip it over as Ricochet does an awesome moonsault out of the ring. This seems to be the Ricochet show, and not the last Sullivan show. He does actually get a pretty big moment though where he does his finisher on EC3 for a ladder on top of the dream. Brutal. All six men end up on ladders. Sullivan hits his finisher on the other big man. That leaves Sullivan on his own and he climbs with Ricochet flying out of nowhere onto his back and the ladder just crumples beneath them. Adam Cole wins it. Sullivan did a fair bit more than I expected and he was involved in a very highly rated match so it's an A. Match 16. No DQ match. Killian Dane versus Lars Sullivan. Alright let's settle this one. Lars managed to send the first big message with a suplex on the outside. In the ring, Sullivan hits brutal cross faces and a brand new move with the German suplex. Randomly, Sullivan also dives off the top to the outside. This guy is not afraid to put his body on the line. He brings him back to the ring with a diving headbutt for a two. Sullivan introduces chairs to the match. At this point, Dane turns it around with a dropkick. Dane gives him a fireman's carry slam, a sent on an evader bomb for a two. Dane now looks to have bad intentions with a table. Sullivan turns it around and slams him. He sets up a chair on top of his opponent and dives from the top, but misses his headbutt and hits the chair. It looks like Dane is going through the table, but no, he turns it into a power slam for a one count. But eventually he can't fight it off and Dane crossbodies him through the table. It's not over though. Sullivan recovers and has the chair, which he puts to good use. He hits the spine buster on the chair and that's how it ends. Sullivan has won this feud in a pretty good match. It's a B. Match 17, 2-on-1 handicap, Lars Sullivan versus Ricochet and Velveteen Dream. 
Both guys look really intimidated. They need to use their speed here. The ref just lets them fight him together. Together they drop kick him. Dream holds him still for Ricochet to take him down with a missile drop kick. Dream hits three top rope axe handles. Sullivan can't land a move on these two. He's eaten so many kicks at this point. Finally, he clotheslines the Dream out of his boots. As he throws Velveteen Dream, the audience is in silence. This match is so boring. The power slam doesn't get the job done, nor does the diving headbutt. They start using their speed again, which allows Dream to hit an elbow and the tag is made. He hits a standing shooting star for a two. Dream hits another dodgy looking dive before Ricochet hits the 450. Then out of nowhere, Dream turns on Ricochet. He leaves the ring. Sullivan beats Ricochet at the Spinebuster. Not a good match, very boring and his lack of moves is getting worse, it's an S. Match 18, NXT TakeOver Chicago, NXT title. The challenger is Lars Sullivan vs the champion, Alistair Black. Really nice trade off to start with. Black lands the first kicks and they fight around the ring. Black dives with double knees off the ring apron. Another big knee in the ring gets Black a two. Sullivan no sells a strike and squashes his opponent out of the ring. Sullivan just about catches the middle rope moonsault and drops him on the apron. The match slows down a lot now with chin locks. Sullivan does manage to connect with the power slam. I was hoping we'd see him bust out some new moves for this one. Instead we get another slam, but this one isn't a pop-up one. Black responds by crushing his jaw with his knees as he counters the headbutt. Black's now rolling with strikes and the lion salt. Sullivan blocks a kick and throws him backwards which leads to a very nice chop block from Sullivan. He puts on a stretch muffler submission that looks pretty brutal. Black won't tap though and he turns it into a pinning attempt. Now Sullivan looks for his finisher but it's reversed into a DET. They fart on the ring apron and Sullivan proves he is the master of the power slam as he does one more on the ring apron. Black is sent back into the middle of the ring and the diving headbutt connects, somehow just a two. Then out of nowhere Black wakes up and hits the black mass for a two. They're saying because Sullivan damaged his leg earlier he didn't hit that move properly. Black knees him in the jaw and hits the black mass again. Sullivan shakes his head and he starts getting up and again. So Sullivan shakes his head and starts getting up again so Black boots him again. And that's the end. Well, the way it's been going lately, I'm not sure he deserved to be the champion anyway. It was a good match, but he just doesn't show enough domination or intimidation. I'll give it a B, but I don't know about him anymore. He's starting to lose my attention. Match 19, Lars Sullivan vs Raul Mendoza. Haven't we already seen this match? We all know Sullivan secretly wants to end this guy. Sullivan somehow seems so much weaker and vulnerable now. Mendoza rocks him a bunch of times. It's really nothing new. I'm pretty sure the pop-up power slam looks more devastating than his actual finisher. Talk about spinning your wheels, it's a D. Match 20, Lars Sullivan vs Victor. I don't even know what the aim or the point is. What is this leading to? Oh well, my questions are soon answered when EC3 jumps Lars Sullivan and the match is thrown out. It's an S. Match 21, Lars Sullivan vs EC3. Wow, EC3 is popular. Not used to seeing that in the WWE. EC3 drives him into the steps three times, which takes Sullivan off his feet. The crowd chant NX3. Sullivan's sporting a huge ugly bruise on his back from that one. Sullivan crashes into the ring pole, which shakes the whole thing. EC3 nails the slam for a two. He then hits a drop kick and also an STO. I can't believe how much weaker Sullivan has looked in the last few matches. The match carries on for a bit. EC3 hits a big German suplex and also a diving crossbody. Sullivan finally closes him down for short arm clothesline. EC3 is still too strong and he fights off the finisher and they fall out of the ring. Lars does his finisher on the apron. He comes back to the ring with a diving headbutt and this one is over. Best match for a bit. Both guys look like they're in a car crash. It's a C. Match 22. Velveteen Dream vs Lars Sullivan. There isn't much to see. If you've seen one of these matches, you've seen them all. My personal highlight was Dream turning the pop-up power slam into a dropkick. Lars has definitely been booked weaker at this point. The Dream hits the Dream Valley Driver. He pretty much has the match won until Tomasha Champa distracts him and then Sullivan wins the match. It's an S. Match 23, Lars Sullivan vs Jobber. What a waste of time. He does hit a basement lariat, which is new to me, but ultimately he beats the Jobber in about 30 seconds. He cuts a promo after the match demanding an NXT title match. He continues killing his opponent to register his interest in a title match. Then Keith Lee kills him with a pounce. Obviously an S. Match 24, Limited Keith Lee takes on Lars Sullivan. There's a big fight feel to this one. They have a big face off. Keith Lee gets caught and smashed into the corner. Lee comes back of punches before he's knocked down again. Now Keith Lee attempts a springboard but Sullivan smashes him away with the boot. Sullivan picks Lee up like he's nothing and tosses him across the ring. He also hits the sliding basement clothesline and a falling headbutt. Lee kicks out at two. The match slows to a snail's pace for a while. Finally, Keith Lee gets a two off a crossbody. They start clubbing each other like morons until Keith Lee pounces him out of the ring and dives down on him. I can see why people raved about limits of Keith Lee at this time, he's great. 
surprisingly just the two. Lee misses his middle rate moonsault and Sullivan beats him with his finisher. A pretty well protected move at this point, it's a C. Now his NXT run actually ended here, but it's not actually the end of the video because Sullivan has a very quick call up to the main roster, but not for six months. He goes off telly for six months and I'll get to why at the end of this video, but he does return and this time he's on the main roster. Match 25, Super Showdown, 3 on 1 handicap match, the Lucha House Party vs Lars Sullivan. A strange pay per view match. Despite being way bigger, he can't seem to hit any cool moves on these guys. All three are pushed out the ring as a boring chant starts. Kalisto's dive doesn't go well for him. You can hear a pin drop in this arena. Sullivan's headbutt is stopped as the Lucha House Party just say screw it and they all get DQ'd. They wipe Sullivan out after the match and run off, but Sullivan catches them and wipes them out on the ramp. What was the point in any of that? It's an S. Match 26, Raw, 3 on 1 handicap elimination match. Lars Sullivan vs the Lucha House Party. I guess WWE don't learn lessons, do they? Lars jumps them before the bell whilst their music is still playing. I think they should have kept it playing, that would have been a cool vibe. Kalisto's dive is caught and he gets the spinebuster to eliminate him in about 10 seconds. Lince Dorado hits a kick and springs into the ring. His head scissors is caught and oh wow, a running powerbomb. That was random, but it was appreciated. He's done. Sullivan has Grand Metalik beaten now, but breaks up his own pin. He heads outside the ring and attacks Kalisto, dropping him on the steps. Back in the ring, the Spinebuster doesn't beat Metalik either, as once again he breaks his own pin up. He spots another luchador and torpedoes him into the ring pole. Sullivan returns to the ring with a diving headbutt to beat Grand Metalik. It's a C. It was actually alright. Sullivan also shows up on SmackDown, and he beats up half the roster on his own. Jeff Hardy jumps him, though, and it's turned into a match. But first, a wild slap nut of his. Jeff Jarrett. I have to say, that is the most random slap nuts appearance of all time on this channel. There's no escaping him. Anyway, match 27 is a surprisingly slow affair. Jeff manages to kick out the sliding clothesline. Sullivan tries to fly, but misses the headbutt. Hardy gives him a jawbreaker and a leg shaker, but it doesn't have much effect. The whisper in the wind hits for a one count. Lars reverses the twist to fate and shoves him out of the ring. On the outside, Hardy's stair dive is caught and he slams Hardy on the apron. That wakes Hardy up who hits the twist to fate. Hardy looks to hit the Swanton Bomb, which is stopped, and Sullivan picks him up and nails the Spine Buster for the free. Wow, that might be one of the worst Jeff Hardy matches I've ever seen. Where was the energy and effort? It's an S for Slapnuts. Match 28, final match, Chad Gable, also known as Shorty G, and he takes on our guy Lars Sullivan. Shorty tries to dive straight away, which is caught, and there's the Scott Hall special. He also hits a humongous flapjack. Gable grabs his eyelashes to stop him. He hits a rolling kick and tries a second, which is sidestepped. He launches Gable across the ring and clotheslines him down. The spine buster ends it. Two new moves in his final match. Two new moves in his final match. This guy looks to have a big future on SmackDown. It's a D. Well, unfortunately not, because just after this, everything would change. Which is what I was alluding to at the start of this video. In May 2019, he was fined $100,000 and forced to take sensitivity training. It was revealed that he had made a series of posts on the bodybuilding forum prior to working for the WWE. These posts covered a variety of topics. They were racist, homophobic, overly aggressive, and also they were putting down a number of the WWE wrestlers. It turns out that he wasn't just scary on the outside, but also pretty scary on the inside. WWE didn't fire him though. He suffered a bad knee injury and kept having anxiety attacks. He was supposed to attack Cena at the Rumble to set up a feud between the two, but he no-showed this and other events due to anxiety. Vince was apparently a massive fan of Sullivan, and he was set to have a monster push. He actually even returned briefly in 2020 with attacks and an interview, but it seems he couldn't get out of his own head and WWE released him. It was then revealed he'd been in a number of homosexual adult films. So when he was making all those forum posts where he hated homosexuals, he was clearly ashamed of who he was. And like, let's be serious here, guys. Who in their right mind is paying to see this guy, in that sense? Now this is the thing about steroids. I do think a controlled routine with a doctor and precautions isn't necessarily a bad thing in wrestling. But the amount this guy must have been shoving into his body. And I know guys like this in real life, and every single one of them is completely insane. It's just too much. It isn't healthy to mess with your body like this, it affects your brain. At some point, it's going to catch up, even if you feel like Superman right now. I've seen so many guys go down this path and people change. Anyway, we've got to shove him a final grade without letting personal feelings affect the decision making. 
I was impressed in the early game, but that soon wore off and he felt like a bit of a one-trick pony. You've got to remember this guy was green and he just came out of the performance centre so I assume he would have gotten better. His lack of moves made the matches boring and predictable and perhaps he needed a bit more of a story and gimmick, although that seemed to be addressed on Raw just before he left. I think they were trying to turn him into this bullying character. He definitely looks scary and is someone you could build a serious blood feud with. Now I wouldn't want him on Ring of the Hawk roster personally, but from what I've seen here it's a C overall with the potential to go further. And if you don't agree with that, I'll get your girl and like Tina R. Turner.